We need to have a chat, mate. It's very serious. What is going on? Shorts. You've got a body warmer on, long sleeve top and shorts. Winter on the top, summer on the bottom. What's going on? I'm the coolest 70 year old man. The coolest 70 year old, yeah, from the waist down. Do you enjoy your bank holiday weekend, Cal? Well, there's no rest for the wicked, Jamie. I was on uncle duties, massive uncle duties over the weekend. We had my niece and nephew round. My nephew is literally like one of the wild thornberries. You know wild thornberries, yeah? The two, you ever watch that? No. Mate, do you watch anything? Like, uh, you don't watch Lost. You didn't know something else that I can't remember now off the top of my head. Must what was good. it? Yeah, exactly, must have been good. But basically, there was a kid in it. I think his name's Donnie, Donnie Thornberry. Just this crazy kid. <laughs> That's what my nephew's like, he's just absolutely crazy. So obviously my sister asks me, I need to go a bit the extra mile, so I was obviously the Easter bunny. <laughs> can you see? Yeah. You can see, yeah, okay, right, yeah. well, you ready? <laughs> but you know, it was a nice time, but after that, straight back to work. We want to get an update on the way out, so let's jump straight into episode 16. Some of the first things that we've done is we got rid of the skip. We did have quite a lot of rubbish and that's all gone now. The reason why we needed to get rid of the skip was we've got quite a lot of big deliveries coming now. We've got some more crushed concrete and type one to put down on the driveway because it was super muddy, as you know. A lot of mud should only be used for one thing, and that's female wrestling. Ding, ding, ding. Joking, I'm just joking around. We've made this a little less puddly, harder to slip and fall over. We'll probably need to get maybe one more final skip just to sort of tidy up any other residual rubbish that we've got. But we want to start planning the driveway soon. I was thinking block paving. Some people have said to me, just have like tarmac. I'm not too sure really. If you've got any ideas, leave them in the comments below. You can let us know what we should maybe do. I was thinking block paving. It's just a bit neat, it's a bit nice. But when I look at some of the neighbor's driveways, they're kind of tarmac as well. So I don't know whether we should just do tarmac, which is kind of like the cheapest option. But having like a proper a nice paved driveway is a bit more expensive, but if you have any issues with things, you can just take the blocks out, replace them, it's quite easy. Oh, this is going to be easy. So let's venture on inside and have a look at some of these updates. Mm -hmm. So I do the penguin walk. Have a look at this gorgeousness, Jamie. We've got nice face and brick in here, that's all been done. And we've got face and brick that's been finished here. George has done a wonderful job. He'll be coming back to do one last little job when we've poured the slab that's just behind us here, which we have been preparing. You can see now we broke out all of that concrete with Dan. Dan's a fantastic man. Broke out all of this concrete. We had a massive pile of concrete all outside, all broken out, ready for the grab lorries to come and get it. And we've now created this little slab to go down into the main slab. So this is gonna be one pour, guys. So it's gonna be a big job. One massive pour of concrete, all power floated, all nice. We save about 900 pound by doing it in one pour. So it is worth doing. If you imagine this engineering brick levels, kind of where this new concrete slab's gonna be. So we'll pour all that and we'll start preparing it, which we are doing right now. NG and Alton are here today, working extremely hard. They're the best guys. We've laid down insulation, which you can sort of feel, like sanding on it, and you've got this plastic sheeting down. Once the plastic sheeting goes down, they start to cut and prepare the steel mesh, which we've got a big pile of over there, and we'll be mounted it onto the chairs, the concrete chairs to raise it, and that'll be ready for the pour. I think maybe we can get the pour done next week, which will be like unbelievable. I was hoping we'd be able to pour it a bit earlier, but sometimes you've got to work with other people's schedules. That's just how it is, what can you do? I mean, look, like, as the area's just tucked, are you okay? As the area gets more tidied up, you can see how big it is. We have actually made some changes to the interior as well. There's a few things that didn't really make sense. So on the drawings originally, there was actually meant to be a, a wall here, which when you think about it, if that's the main entrance, there's no point in us having a wall here. Imagine, right? You'd be coming in, coming through the front door, walk in, and then you're coming down. There's a wall here and you have to be like, to come out into the area, it just made no sense. We just said, no point in putting a wall there. It's a nice big opening. We'll just create like a little archway there that will look nice. We can do that with the plasterboard. And also there's a doorway there, right? Which goes into the stairwell. But there's another doorway right here, which is like the fire exit, which also leads into the stairway. So why have we got two doors on either side of the toilet? It just doesn't make sense to me. If you imagine the size of that wall right here, if you put a doorway there, 
you can't put any racking or shelving against that wall because it blocks the access for the door. But we don't need it. So I said, we'll block that wall off. We'll make it into like a store for like hoovers, vacuums, whatever. It's just in the stairwell. So when you're in the stairwell, you can actually just grab it. Six, seven. This is so much. I think that's better now. Yeah. We've had a guy who was meant to come to us two days on the trot and hasn't, but I'll give him another ring and see where he is. Come have a look. So this is the inside of the stairwell. It's empty now because we've got our temporary staircase, which leads straight up into the mezzanine. But this is actually the stairwell. This is the actual floor level, and you'll be walking from the floor level onto the staircase straight up there. We're trying to work out the quotations for the staircase. We're just going to go for a steel one. I think that's the most fitting, considering it's an industrial space. And hopefully we can chase this guy down and we can get measured up for a nice staircase in here because obviously we want to get the one that leads up to the mezzanine taken down and get a nice one in here. We've also prepared the slab to be poured in here. You can actually get a bit of a better look of how the slab works. You know, we've got insulation, plastic sheeting, steel reinforcement there. And I've just put some insulation whilst I'm standing on it to sort of dissipate my weight a little bit. Because uh, obviously I'm not exactly the lightest person, you know what I'm saying? We're going to get this all measured up soon, get a price and hopefully get it installed. Right, so what have we got delivered here today? What's happening? We've got the um, blue plaster. Is that the moisture resistant one? No, this is the soundboard. This is 15 millimeters. Oh, OK. Is there more coming today? There's more coming today. Lots of deliveries today, all very exciting. And we've got more plasterboard coming later. And Dad looks terrible. <laughs> so this is a delivery of our 15 mil board. So this is the soundboard, a bit thicker. That's a thick ass board, damn! We want to be using that on the ceilings and stuff. It helps keep the noise down of rain on the roof. Just generally makes a more sound, pleasant environment. So we've got all that 50 mil board here. There's going to be more coming today. Dad's on the scene, making sure everything's going well, the delivery's going well. And we're going to do like a little count, make sure the quantity's right. And then we can get some of this stuff ready to start putting up and doing the dry lining. In fact, I'll explain a little bit more about how this works inside. So exhibit A, we have a wall here. And what we're going to be doing essentially is a process called tape and jointing and dot and dab. They're going to literally get the boards, they get the dot and dab material, put it on the wall, get the plaster boards, put them against the wall, make sure that they're level, and then use tape and jointing to hide the seams of the plasterboard. For an industrial purpose, it's much easier to do it this way. You know, this is gonna be a working environment. We didn't wanna do wet plaster because that's kind of more domestic. You get a nice, smooth, skimmed finish, and it's more of a sort of residential look rather than an industrial look. This way, we can get the dry line and done much faster. Also allows us to do it in a more inexpensive way too, because if you imagine when you're taping and jointing seams, instead of skimming an entire wall, you can save a bit of time there, and time is money at at the end of the day when it comes to construction. We didn't decide to paint any of the walls and just leave them exposed blockwork or exposed brickwork. The only exposed brickwork will be sort of the entrance there because it's a feature of the design. And then also when we enclose off the mainland dispatch area with that little L-shaped wall with some windows in between, that'll be face work as well. All the dry lining is being planned and prepped. It's gonna completely change how the building looks inside. It will actually look like a habitable space. So I'm really excited to get started on that. And hopefully we can get it done in the month of April. It's early April now. And if we get the dry line and finished by then, I mean, it's just gonna be a massive change. It also will be applied onto the ceiling as well. That's what the 15 millimeter board is for. So all of those joists that you can see, all of those beams and so on will all be hidden once that dry line is put in place. Let's go, baby. We had some good comments in the previous video about what to do about this wee little eyesore that we've got in the mezzanine. We also had some feedback from Engie, who's one of the guys working on site with us. He actually mentioned that we could clad it in mirrored acrylic. So it would essentially be mirroring the light from the external space, almost making it invisible. Thought that was quite interesting. We had some emails from people about different types of plasterboard to clad it with, which could be quite good as well. Some people said just paint it, it adds to the industrial look. I like that idea as well. So we're actually going to experiment a little bit because it won't be too expensive to experiment if we measure up and get some mirrored acrylic pieces, laser cut, it's not gonna be crazy expensive. If we clad it with plasterboard and paint it, not gonna be crazy expensive. I think we'll do a few little experiments and see where it goes from there. Now, our bullseye window, I was hoping would be in by now, but it's not because we have started putting the window frames in place. They are in place around the other aspects of the building, but unfortunately there was an issue with the glass. The glass has to be remade. It wasn't our fault, it was the factory's fault, unfortunately. They had basically used dimensions from the first quotation rather than the final survey. So we're gonna have a look at some of the window frames now we'll head up into the first floor area and see what it's looking like. So we've got some of the larger windows in place. You can see 
Nice big double pane window here, which is sort of opening from the bottom and it comes out like that, really nice. We've got no glass in there at the minute, so you don't want to be leaning against the glass, you fall right through. Nice and cool, son. Nice and cool, you know what I mean? <laughs> That glass will probably take another week to remake, so we're hoping to get that done as soon as we can. Some of the smaller window frames have been put in. You can see here, just nice, simple, anthracite grey to match the roof. It's looking pretty nice. Once that glass goes in, we're we'll really happy. Another big aspect of the building finished. We can finally get some sound dampening upstairs. Some of the guys are on the roof now working really hard, getting all the little bits and bobs finished. For this window in particular, we haven't put the window frame in. That's because we're gonna be bringing up the set through here. They're gonna be doing it this weekend, bringing in the big chair area, the Millennium Falcon chair. By then the roof should be done. We'll cover it with some sheeting, keep it safe up here and well protected. We'll be ready to put the final window frame in there and then the rest of the set will just be brought up through the stairs. Dad's just come in now, he's having a bit of a look and I think they're discussing where they want to be putting some of the plasterboard that's just been delivered. We did get the additional plasterboard delivered right now, so they're going to be working that out and we'll get it all put up here, nice and safe, nice and dry, and we'll see what the big man says himself. What's happening, Dad? I'm another big man, I'm a very small man. <laughs> So that is the update for today's episode, guys. We've got the rest of the materials just arrived here. More plasterboard, you can see we've got pink plasterboard, we've got soundboard, we've got moisture resistant board, all here, nicely delivered. We're gonna get that all loaded into the warehouse. The next few weeks are gonna be pretty interesting for us. We've got to prepare for May 4th. I've got tracking just now for the MPP samples that are on their way, the final samples for us to review. We had the Creepy Uncle Hilts. For those who don't know who the Creepy Uncle Hilts are, they're the Last Jedi Luke Skywalker version. So Dennis coined it the Creepy Uncle. We've got those arriving, we've got more stock arriving towards the end of the month, all in preparation for our May 4th sale. So all of you watching, we are going to be having a May 4th sale. We've got some cool projects to launch on that day as well. So keep an eye out for that. Keep an eye out for your emails. We'll be emailing everyone with plenty of notice to let them know what's coming. In the meantime, I'll get back to work. I'll get back to packing for today. Let the guys crack on with all this stuff and I will see you guys in the next episode. Make sure you like and subscribe. Peace. Have you got that? Who is getting Domino's at nine o'clock in the morning? <laughs> Domino's? He's quite young, isn't he, being up there? He's in school on right now. Underage labor car. Huh? Just for shame yourself. <laughs> I don't even know what's going on. This is why we have Dad, eh? He just knows what to do. He's got it all in his head. Look at him go. I walked up there and I was like, why is there a kid in the warehouse? But he must be someone's son. Where's he come from? Should anyway. Easter bunny for him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should have done it for him. I wonder what's going on in that man's head, honestly. Not like the monkey clapping cymbals. Could be that, who knows. Can you imagine you just waking up, brush your teeth, head down, and you're like, do you know what would be really great this morning? Fucking pepperoni pizza. <laughs> it's pointless. Fist bump. Fist bump.